Welcome back to ECMID Television, where we're delighted to bring you one of our keynote speakers here at the ECMID Congress in Vienna this year. Professor Eric Pamer is joining us from New York. He's just presented an outstanding standing room only presentation as well. Um, and it's a pleasure to have you with us, Professor. Um, firstly, the title of your presentation that you gave at Congress this year, sir. What were you speaking about? Well, I was speaking about uh, the uh, resistance to a wide range of infections that the normal microbiome uh, confers and how uh, many medical treatments uh, that we perform, especially broad-spectrum antibiotic administration, uh, damage the microbiota and thereby uh, increase susceptibility uh, to infection. Right. Now one of those areas that, that really intrigues me, that you're also a bit of a specialist in, is this aspect of fecal transplantation, which arose at the 26th ECMID Congress, right. when papers were presented, lots of interest in it. And at the time, there was some concern that whilst fecal transplantation was a pretty good alternative in some instances where there was a lack of new drugs for bad bugs, right. if I put it that right. way, that there was some level of transfer that was going on within fecal transplantation that may have kind of affected the recipient right. in the style of what the donor had. If that, forgive right. my layman's okay. description right. of it. Help, right. help me with that. What's the update? What's the skinny on that? So, uh, so this is something that we've now understood for quite a while. Uh, the intestinal microbiota and in fact uh, a fecal sample that would be used uh, for transplantation is a very complex mixture of uh, bacteria, viruses, uh, yeasts, and even uh, some protozoa. So uh, we now know that the composition of the microbiota can influence um, autoimmune diseases. We believe it plays a role in inflammatory bowel disease. It may contribute to the development of uh, obesity and other metabolic derangements. Like a diabetes, for example. Uh, yes, uh, potentially. And uh, also, increasingly, uh, for certain neurologic states. Uh, there is some data coming out from experimental models that, uh, for example, Parkinson's disease or autism may be influenced by it. The bottom line is that for most of those conditions, we don't know the precise bacteria uh, or microbes that are, uh, are the cause of right. this. And uh, although uh, for certain diseases like recurrent C. difficile colitis, fecal transplantation has been very effective and superior to the treatments that we routinely do, which is more antibiotics, mm -hmm. uh, there, uh, there is ongoing concern that uh, we may be transferring some of the um, uh, so-called metabolome uh, from the donor uh, to the recipient that may, uh, over the long term, lead to some uh, uh, potentially undesirable um, uh, results. Uh, now, that's a concern. Uh, there aren't too many examples of that actually having occurred. And the benefits still outweigh the concerns. Well, I think uh, there, there you have to balance the severity of the disease you're trying to either prevent or treat yes. with the, uh, uh, the potential risk of these. When somebody has a recurrent uh, C. difficile colitis and, uh, and is unable to go to a restaurant for dinner, yeah. uh, then uh, you might be willing to take some of these risks in order to alleviate that. I, I did hear last year that the search was on then for chemical feces that might overcome that particular right. issue. You and your team are working on a slightly different route though, right. aren't you? Right. You're so, looking to identify root cause? So we're trying to, affine, uh, to identify the specific bacteria uh, in a fecal sample that confer a specific benefit. Uh, so, uh, what uh, the topics I covered in my uh, presentation today was, uh, uh, or, or, or uh, were uh, the uh, uh, specific bacteria that confer resistance to C. diff, and right. we identified four bacterial species that have uh, been very highly characterized, whole genome sequenced, 
and uh, tested at least so far in an animal model, right. and uh, also for vancomycin-resistant enterococcus, and most recently for uh, Listeria monocytogenes. So we believe uh, that in contrast to a fecal sample, which our current technology is not able to completely define, mm -hmm. uh, uh, these bacterial populations can be defined. Now, it's going to take uh, uh, clinical trials to test their effectiveness, and people are going to have to pay long-term attention to uh, potential uh, long-term complications. So we know, or we suspect, that uh, the microbiota uh, may have impact uh, uh, on diseases that take decades to develop. So it may be uh, 10, 20 years uh, before yes. we learn about uh, potential downsides to some agents that may have a short-term benefit. Wow, complex subject, but yes. progress is being made, sir. Yes. Excellent, well, I'm looking forward to 28th ECMED, okay. so you can come back and give us even more information. Yes. But, you know, it's standing room only in terms of your keynote presentation. It's not hard to see why, sir. Thank okay. you for taking time out of your schedule at Congress to come and talk to us here at ECMED TV. It's been okay. a real pleasure. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, sir. Nice yeah. to meet you. Thanks.